This lesson will cover the following topics. Air conditioning system overview, air conditioned air distribution, air conditioning compartments, mix manifold description, air conditioning packs and airflow control, cooling cycle and water separation, recirculation system, ventilation system, equipment cooling system, and a lesson summary. The air conditioning system is made up of an enormous amount of interfaces and mechanisms that control the interior environment of the 737NG for passengers, flight crew, and electronic equipment. In this lesson, our discussion is going to cover an explanation of how most of these systems operate and how the flight crew controls them. Essentially, the air conditioning system performs the following functions. It produces fresh conditioned airflow for air pressurization and ventilation, controls the flight compartment and passenger cabin temperatures, recirculates around 50% of the cabin air for ventilation purposes, and removes unpleasant air from laboratories and galleys. For air conditioning purposes, the 737NG cabin is divided into three zones, the flight compartment and flight deck, forward passenger compartment, and aft passenger compartment. Conditioned air may come from either of the following sources. Ground-supplied preconditioned air, recirculation system, and air conditioning packs. All sources supply their conditioned air to a main distribution manifold, also known as the mix manifold. This essentially acts as a giant pool that collects conditioned air from all sources and supplies it to the respective cabin sections that require air conditioning. The air conditioning packs supply cool conditioned air at one specific temperature that's in accordance with the coldest of the three cabin zones. Because of this, the other two cabin zones may end up being colder than they need to be. To counter this condition, the other two cabin zones are precisely fed with warmer air to bring the zone air temperature up to the desired limit. This warm air is known as trim air. We'll talk about all these systems and components progressively, so let's start with the air conditioning distribution system. The air conditioning distribution system is in charge of supplying conditioned air to the three airplane zones and to electronic equipment for cooling purposes. The flight deck zone is provided a constant supply of fresh air and the passenger cabin zones, forward and aft, are provided fresh air and recirculated air. Electronic equipment is cooled with fans that move air around the equipment. Conditioned air from all the sources is mixed and collected within the mixed manifold, as mentioned before. These sources are left and right air conditioning packs, ground-supplied preconditioned air, and the recirculation system. There's also a ventilation system that takes advantage of pressure differences to extract air from the 737NG's light preconditioned air. This process is briefly discussed further along in this lesson. The flight deck is supplied with conditioned air from the left air conditioning pack. If the left pack becomes inoperative, the flight deck automatically receives conditioned air from the right pack. Flight deck temperature may be selected differently than the passenger cabin with the control cabin temperature selector that has two positions. Automatic. Temperature is automatically controlled. If the selector is rotated towards C or W, which are cool and warm respectively, manual temperature control is engaged. Off. The flight deck trim air valve is closed and the temperature controls produce air to supply a 24 degrees Celsius demand. Trim air will soon be discussed in this lesson. The forward and aft passenger compartments are supplied with air from the mixed manifold. From the mixed manifold, conditioned air flows through rising ducts and up sidewalls to an overhead distribution duct that effectively distributes air symmetrically in the cabin. The passenger cabin compartment's temperature may also be controlled with the related forward and aft cabin temperature selectors. These have the same positions as the control cabin selectors. All three cabin selectors have a range that is approximately 18 degrees Celsius to 30 degrees Celsius. 
They are also associated to three zone temp lights that illuminate when there is a forward or aft cabin duct temperature overheat, or there is a control cabin duct temperature overheat, or there's a failure of the flight deck primary and standby temperature controls. The primary and standby temperature controllers are electronic units that control the packed temperature control valves to satisfy the conditioned air demand. There's a primary and a standby controller to provide system redundancy. So, if a primary temperature control fails, the standby control assumes authority immediately. When this occurs, the pack light illuminates in the air conditioning panel. And there's also a master caution and an air conditioning system enunciator. If both the primary and standby temperature controls fail for the same pack, the same alerts will display and the pack will still continue to operate, but without any form of temperature control. When the condition that caused the pack light to illuminate has been corrected, the trip reset switch must be pressed in the air conditioning overhead panel to bring the system back to normal operation. Trip reset is also discussed in the bleed air lesson. Now, we've mentioned the word pack a few times already in this lesson. What exactly are the packs? Let's discuss a bit about what they do, how they take warm air, cool it, and deliver it to the mixed manifold. Packs are very ambiguously discussed in the 737NG documentation. However, the word pack is actually an acronym for Pressurization and Air Conditioning Kit. Essentially, the two packs on the 737NG are small air compressors that take bleed air from the engines, after which the air is cooled, filtered, and delivered to the flight deck and forward and aft passenger cabins for temperature control. Bleed air is extensively discussed in the Air Systems Bleed Air Lesson, but essentially it's highly compressed, high-temperature, high-pressure air that's extracted from the engine compression stage for pneumatic power. Both packs form part of the cooling process, which performs the following functions. It regulates bleed air demand from the pneumatic manifold towards the air conditioning packs, removes excessive heat from air entering the packs, and controls the temperature and humidity levels of the air that exits the packs. Moving on, bleed air passes through a flow control valve that regulates bleed air flow according to pack demand. The flow valve is controlled by the air conditioning pack switches in the forward overhead panel. There's one switch per engine, and both have the following positions. Off, auto, and high. The operation logic is simple. When both packs are operative and their switches are in the auto position, the packs provide airflow under normal conditions. Naturally, if one pack fails, the other pack automatically switches to high airflow to supply the demand for conditioned air and ventilation. This protection mechanism is only available during flight when the trailing edge flaps are in the up position. Similarly, like in the case of a bleeds-off takeoff, where both engine bleed switches are off and the APU is supplying pneumatic power, the packs deliver high airflow regardless of any flight parameter. For a detailed explanation of the bleeds-off takeoff procedure, Watch the 737NGX line work bleeds off lesson. After the flow control stage, air passes through a heat exchanger where ram air cools down the bleed air. Ram air is external dynamic air that enters the aircraft through a ram air inlet door. When the aircraft is moving slowly, such as during slow flight, low air density, or ground operations, the ram air inlet door opens to its fully open position to maximize air intake.